What was the biggest scam you ever fell for? There was a company advertising that they would help people wipe out predatory student loans. Long story short I blew $800 on a company that got shut down by the Govet for fraudulent practices and was denied a refund. Same kinda. They made me pay $800 to get on an income-driven repayment plan. I did, and then I found out I can do the recertification by myself every year. I downloaded all the cool new mouse cursors and my parents' computer was never the same again. Edit. To those asking, lending a helping hand, this was before even the word, iPod, existed. Same. I also deleted all of the folders that had nothing in them, and pretended like I didn't know what happened when our family computer wouldn't work anymore. Twice. My former best friend and his dad cheated me out of my money to invest in their company. When I asked for a contract, his dad said, between true friends, words aren't necessary. When they started making money, I asked for my money back, and they said they didn't owe me a thing. I'm sorry you lost your money, but that one statement about contracts was a massive red flag waving in your face to not give them your money. An email something like, your PayPal has been accessed from an unknown source, click here to update your password. It looked official and asked for me to log in to update my password. When I realized the website didn't allow me to view my profile I panicked. I then spent the day taking the necessary precautions. Lesson. Always go to the website yourself and don't click links in emails. I almost fell for one of these once. Luckily I thought to click to see the email address it was sent from and it was some garbled obviously scam email. I still get emails like that every so often and I just mark them as spam every time. In 2008, there was a member on most auto forums I was on who advertised a racing business. A few people had dealt with him and said he was great. I contact him, asked him to get me pricing for some expensive parts. His pricing came back great, so I sent him payment and waited. Nothing. I called him and he gave me the runaround, claiming his supplier was going to drop ship to me. Nothing. I kept contacting him over and over, and he eventually stopped answering my calls. One of the forums started a call-out thread for the guy, since he ghosted a bunch of members after taking their orders. His website even went down. I used the payment info to track the guy down, and verified it with his public county tax records. Another forum member tracked him down on a home improvement forum where he was bragging about all of these expensive home updates he was doing. Eventually, he sent me half of my order after I asked if any forum members lived near him. Several showed up at his doorstep and threatened to beat the crap out of him if he didn't make good on his orders to everyone. I never got the rest, and he told me that if my friends ever showed up again, he'd shoot them and then hunt me down too. I told him to try, he told me off and that was the last I ever heard of him. Screw that guy. Asterisk edit, asterisk just googled the guy's name and his business. Looks like he is up to his same old crap again. What a loser. Contact his state's ag with your information and contacts for others that were scammed. I went to buy a Rolling Stones ticket from a scalper years ago, I know, I know, and he talked me into a VIP backstage pass. He said that's all I need. Free food, booze, all the perks. He insisted the sticker was all I needed to get in, no paper ticket necessary. So a few hours later I go to the show, obviously can't get in, it was a VIP pass from the night before. There was no date on it, just a different shape. I try every single gate hoping someone won't notice, not care and finally try the media entrance. The nice lady ushered me right in, I took an elevator up to the main concourse and I was free as a bird. I didn't have a seat obviously but I snuck down to the floor and ended up having a great show. Still feel burned by the stupid fuck to this day though. I've seen him at other shows, nice neck tattoo of a fish, you fucking prick, and I always fuck with him. Thanks for listening. Not 100% sure I got scammed but 99.99% sure I got scammed over baby formula. I was at the grocery store and some guy speaking broken English came up to me with a sob story about losing his job and having a baby with a special diet and needing to feed him. It felt odd right off the bat but having just become a dad myself I felt compassionate enough to begrudgingly agreed after he said he didn't want money, he just needed someone to buy some formula. I walk him to the self-checkout and he scans all his stuff, the total was like $350. I looked at the total looked at him and he pulls the think of the baby card. So I swipe my card. He tried to take the receipt at the end but I said since it was my card I'd keep it. As I walked away to finish my shopping I noticed he was lingering. I took a lap around one of the aisles. He was still there but talking to the self-checkout supervisor. He has her do something at the checkout we used and then he finally leaves. I was just gonna let it go but I had a gut feeling something seemed off so I went up to the supervisor and asked what the gentleman needed. She said he claimed his receipt didn't print and needed a copy. 
That's when I figured it out. Mofo was gonna return it all and ask for it on a GC. I was so annoyed I didn't even finish shopping. Edit. Well good morning. That blew up. Same exact thing happened to me. Seen a guy by the subway that had a sob story of his own and was conveniently in front of a store that sold baby formula. Bought him two cases and walked away feeling really nice but the next week I seen him stationed in the same place stopping people. Felt like an idiot but I'm sure the store owner had some sort of deal with him because if he didn't, he probably would've stopped me from helping this guy. Anytime I've bought a car. I feel like car dealerships, salesmen are literally just there to scam you of money. Why are these things negotiable? And if you're not good at negotiating, you just get utterly scammed trying to buy one. There should be standard pricing for everyone. I should be able to go in and get a car with the same ease and speed of going into a Costco and buying a TV. I went to look at a used car at a dealership, approximately 5 years ago. At the time, I didn't have a running vehicle and was looking for something, reliable, from a, decent, dealership so the guy actually picked me up for about a 45 minutes drive to the dealership, pretty solid customer service I thought. Ensuing haggling as I was broker than a joker at the time, we eventually settled on a payment plan. The scumbag salesman proceeds to present me the paperwork that included, service fees. Basically, any discount I was able to get out of them were forfeit due to the fact the guy picked me up and drive me to the dealership. I'm talking max $10 bucks of fuel at the most. Fuck. This. Were my first thoughts so I told the guy politely I was no longer interested for obvious reasons. Immediately, the whole experience changed. What a waste of my goddamn morning, he said. I picked you up so you could actually find a way home, the 45 minutes drive turned into a 2 hour walk to what transit was available, finally got home 3 and a half hours later. If I ever get to a low point that I can't recover from, I will definitely be lighting every single one of their vehicles on fire and taking a runny shit on their front door. Rich dad poor dad, got halfway through the third book before I realized the substance was never coming, he was just selling books. This is the right answer. This was a book of boomer family values porn written by boomers, for boomers. When I read it, it was about as relevant as walking into the hiring office and speaking to the manager with a determined look in your eye. A year ago, I'm 17 now, I wanted to get into the stock market and met someone online through a mutual online friend who was old enough to open a broker. I did all the research and, at the height of corona, I invested 3k, all my savings, into a stock that eventually multiplied. Guy took my money and the profits and both ended up blocking me skeptical smiley face. Never, ever, ever give money to anybody online. I got played by someone at the mall in Portland, Oregon. It was around Christmas and I was doing some Christmas shopping and this well-dressed dude came up to me in sort of a panic saying he'd had his bag stolen with his wallet in it and he needed help cashing a check so he could finish his Christmas shopping. My dumbass agreed to cash a $600 check and the dude gave me $50 for helping him out. I went home feeling like I'd done a good deed, but a week or so later the bank hit me up and told me I'd cashed a check from a closed account and I was liable for the deficit, plus fees. That's what I get for trying to be nice to a stranger I suppose. I fell for something similar, but thankfully, it was only something like $60, but at the time I wasn't making much money, so it kind of hurt, just it could have been so much worse. In RuneScape, a random friendly player lead me to this random building with a cool object, I've long forgotten what the object is, and I picked up the object. I was promptly killed by a trap set on this object. The other player stole all my loot. I fell for a scam in RuneScape, too, years ago. I had the green metal armor, forget what? Platinum? And he said he could get it modified to add trimming it something? Naturally, as soon as he got the last piece, he says, later, and logs off. I shrugged because I had more than enough to replace it quickly enough. I even found him logged into another server and sent him a, well played, message. A few days later, I saw someone else trying it with a player, and I immediately ratted the scammer out. I almost got fished. This was almost 20 years ago when it wasn't even called that. I got an email that my eBay account had been compromised click on this link to reset your password. I filled everything out and was mere seconds away from hitting submit when I suddenly realized it looked off. I don't exactly remember what tipped me off I think something that looked like a field was actually a JPEG and then I double checked the domain and it was something weird. Well, that sometimes happens, but I backed out, went to my actual eBay account and just changed my password there. A little digging and it was a new scam circulating the internet. Which at the time it was. Edit. Hey, guys. Thanks for the advice, but this was 20 years ago. I know how to avoid them now. As I mentioned, this was all new at the time. In 1984 at my little liberal arts college, I said to this guy, 
What if we put up a fake login screen and stole everyone's username and passwords? Ha ha ha. This was on a Vax minus 11 750ths. I quickly forgot about it. Guy walked down to the library the next day, sat at a terminal. Yes that is how it was back then, and actually did it in about 30 minutes. Security was non-existent back then. Right after my dad died I got a call from a number I didn't know. They left a voicemail saying they needed my social security number so they could pay out a life insurance policy to me. I was 21 and super inexperienced with stuff like this. So I did what any real adult would do. I asked my mom for advice. She told me it was legit and to give them my SS number. I had a weird feeling about it but if my mom said it was okay then it must be okay. I did it. I called back and gave the guy that answered my SS number. I never got a check but my mom suddenly did from a policy my dad, forgot, to take her off of even though they had been divorced years before. She did give my 10k but I'm 100% positive it was worth way more and she had something to do with it all. We don't talk anymore for various reasons including this one. Oh so your mom scammed you? That's brutal. The American education system. I've seen all these memes about uneducated Americans and can't help but ask, is it that bad, that people can't tell where their own country is in the map, or are Americans simply great pranksters that just manage to make us all think they're idiots? Me and my dad go into Walmart to buy some groceries. We come out and load them into the truck, and the truck won't start? Never had problems with the truck before this. My dad is getting frustrated as we have chilled food with us and it's summer. Suddenly, a homeless man on a bike rolls up and asks what the problem was. My dad explains that he has no idea his truck just won't start. Guy asked to take a look. Guy gets under the truck and in 10 seconds comes back out. He told my dad he found the problem, a small part was missing on his truck, me and my dad are dipshits when it comes to cars so I can't remember what part he said. Also I was 10, the man said he just so happened to have the same part in his bag of knickknacks. Said if he gave him $50 he'd put it on for him. My dad, excited, agreed. The man went under the truck, another 10 seconds pops back up, says give it a try. Truck starts no problem, my dad thanks the man so much and then gives him another $40 for his trouble. It was only on Teehee ride home that I brought it up to my dad, you're telling me none of that seemed off to? Random homeless man rides up just in time with just the right part we need? It finally hits my dad and he turns around to find the guy but he was long gone. Greater than said if he gave him $50 he'd put it on for him. Greater than then gives him another $40 for his trouble. Wasn't the original $50 for his trouble? Face with raised eyebrow? A few years ago I was drinking heavily while on anxiety medication, got both monkeys off my back since, and had a lot of free time to play video games. Somehow I managed to waste hundreds of bucks and microtransactions in NBA 2K when I was out of it. I had a wicked good my team at the end of it but they seemed to structure their transactions to appeal to impulsive kids and otherwise compromised people. Never understood why games like Fortnite had a rotating daily list of cosmetics instead of just having their full shop always available. Turns out the limited time pressure works wonders on people. These people called me with one of HMRC numbers telling me I didn't pay some taxes, saying they sent lots of letters to my old address to which I never responded. I didn't know they could make me see the number they wanted. After a quick check on the government website I saw that the number was the same and I believed them. I was 20 yo and living in London on my own. I gave them £1,000 and never felt so stupid in my life. Spent $250 on Talkspace, got $200 back because I demanded a redone. They, their therapists, waste a week of your time to reply once and reply with a canned response of, oh that sounds stressful, how is your sleep schedule? I cannot stress enough how much of a waste of time and money that shit was. Edit. I even switched therapists twice in that time. I could do that for free. That sounds stressful, how is your sleep schedule? Your college life is the best time you'll ever have. As someone who went to college at 27, this shit sucks. I honestly want to quit every single day. I fucksting hate it. Massive pay cut, constant stress and frustration especially with online classes that somehow cost more and the kicker is you're paying for it. If I somehow make it to the end of next year, this shit better be worth it or I'm going to flip. The. Fuck. Out. Not too bad I lost 35 bucks. I fell for those stores on Instagram. I was just getting on it so I didn't know most were scam stores. Because I followed some small retailers that I already bought from. I thought it was the same thing. Website was or looked legit but I never got my boots. Smart too because I got it from them because they were 15 bucks cheaper. Not some crazy amount that made you question it. Luckily I paid with PayPal. It could've been worse if they had my credit card information.
Ironically, if you'd used your credit card you would have reported it and gotten all your money back. As long as you notify the card company, they handle it. With PayPal, you can file a claim but they decide whether or not to honor it. You don't always win. You know those phone scams where people pretend to be from Microsoft or some other computer company. Well, I didn't know they were scams when I was in elementary school but was allowed to talk to people on the phone, so I actually talked to this scammer for a while writing stuff down and taking him seriously. Fortunately, I called my mom on my cell phone in the middle of it to tell her about it and ask her what to do, and she told me to shut the computer off. No harm done in the end. Parents. Teach your kids about scammers. Ironically, my mom fell for one of those about three months ago. I had to explain to her that not only would the real Microsoft never cold call her to just see how her computer was doing, she has an iPad. Kids. Teach your parents about scammers. ITT Tech. OMG. I got accepted to their nursing G school but could not get my loans to go through. Someone was watching out for me. Answered a classified ad for one of those entry-level advertising, PR management, jobs. Got an interview, which was pretty vague about what the job actually entailed, invited to the second interview, which was an all-day shadowing of a current employee. What they did all day was door-to-door -door coupon sales. I probably should have turned and run after that, but the people I was shadowing swore up and down that I'd only be in the field for the first two weeks, just so I could understand what the salespeople do, and would work in the office after that. Based on that, I took the job. In my defense, this was in 1996 there was no glass door or anything where I could check this company out. I slogged it out in the field for two weeks, I hated it and was bad at it. It also didn't help that they sent me to some really sketchy neighborhoods. The third week rolled around and nobody had said anything about when I'd start working in the office, so I asked one of the team leaders about it. He gave me this odd look and told me that everyone works in the field the only person who got to work in the office and didn't have to go into the field was the owner. That's the only job I've ever walked out on. Went on one of those interviews where I had to shadow a salesperson for the day. Turns out they were lying out their asses when approaching businesses. They claimed to be major telephone, internet company, let's call them compact, but were actually a third-party seller that was like twice as expensive. We walked door to door essentially fishing the owners, you made a call for customer service? Some businesses would straight up say WTF? Our internet works fine, or they didn't even use compact. We would just quickly leave and head to the next one. I remember following my trainer into one business and the guy fell for it and said, oh thank god. Being on the phone with you guys yesterday was such a drag, I'm a busy guy, I was on hold forever and sorry but I just had to hang up. I'm so glad you guys came out. And trainer kept feeding him lies like, yeah, you've been a loyal customer so I figured I'd just come out and personally get it all fixed up for you. Poor guy. The lady I was shadowing proceeded to switch over all his contracts to third-party company under the guise of being a compact customer service rep, and structured the payments to look like he was getting a deal but was actually adding a bunch of frivolous shit that would cost him tenfold over time. I would have left earlier but she had driven me around and we were in a completely different city and didn't want to get stranded. The entire ride back she was feeding me more bullshit about how I would be perfect for the job, and that I'm already hired. As soon as we got back to the main office, I didn't even go inside for the follow-up. Just walked straight to my car and left. At one point I had created an email address and put out some business cards for house sitting, pet sitting, cleaning. Someone emailed me pretending to be moving from Australia to my little US Midwest town and wanted to pay me like 3 grand to help them get settled. They sent me a check and everything, tried to get me to deposit it right away, but my bank was closed and the ATM wouldn't take it. After I was an idiot and already tried depositing it, I looked at the check and saw it was a business check. Googled the business, and it wasn't even located in my state. Called them, and of course they weren't affiliated with the person. I sent a strongly worded email to the person, and then over the next couple months got three more similarly worded scam emails from different addresses, but clearly this same person. It made me feel really dumb that I fell for it, and would have lost $3,000 if not for that lovely ATM. I almost fell for a similar scam. Got a big fat check, and they wanted me to deposit it immediately, and just like you, my bank was already closed, so that gave me time to ponder it. I googled the name on the check and called their bank, and although they wouldn't give much information, they did tell me that there was not enough money in that account to cash that check. I emailed the original person and told them so. They did not answer. I had a bad feeling all along, but I had to leave my job, and I was really in need of a job. So glad I took the time to think it through. I am the proud owner of a timeshare. My parents have one. To quote them, it's really a scam but it forces us to take vacations otherwise we would just keep working so it's worth it.
I spent money with a credit repair company called Platinum Financial. After they had my money they basically did nothing for me and then when I tried to call to complain the number was disconnected and everything. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.